AR is quite important and it's also important how we research creatively on it. I think as a role of designer, we should really try to hack into the use of tools and use it to find out and figure out what kind of creative physical environment we can create. Hello, my name is Sumin. Uh, I'm a design faculty at SciArc and I'm also a robotic researcher. We are in Los Angeles, Saya Gallery. The exhibition is called 2021. The STEAM Odyssey, actually we were benchmarking the Space Odyssey movie because we think it's a part of a longer journey of our research, of our interesting materials, but in this case specifically about steam bending wood process. This project is under a longer research agenda looking at the AR fabrication of steam bending wood. And this research has inherited our previous research uh, done uh, together with Igor Pantic, Guilin Jan and Cameron Yuhan of the Tallinn Biennale Steampunk Pavilion. My previous few years of research as well as this project is actually a part of my interest really looking at different human roles in construction process and production chain. The computational design research has been developed around decades, uh, uh, more focusing on the robotics or machinic, CNC or 3D printing, mainly focused on additive process or subtractive process, maybe also about robotic arms or mobile robots and so on. But we realized that those research has been quite limited in the looking or researching at different materialities. They have been more focused on simplification of processes or going against any material behavior. So we have been really interested in looking at how material behaves uh, and in order to deal with those unexpected, very difficulties of crafting processes, we realized that Human role has been always, always really important in any processes, even very high-tech robotic or machinic processes. In our uh, research, we have been always really focusing on how this human intuition and human role can be maximized or can benefit in combination of computational tools and machines. That's how this whole research started. This is a portion of a fully enclosed inhabitable space. This project was designed and produced during around four to five months time, including the initial design concept and stuff. The tool sets and everything is inherited from, the, from our background research, of course. But the design itself has took around four to five months and we had around six, seven people involved in it, but only for the construction. We have produced this in Sayak parking lot, just outside of this gallery with two of my students and myself. So we have been working just on the construction around three months time with three people. It has been quite intensive, but it also proves that maybe a limited amount of labor and knowledge can also produce this large scale project. This project was using a steam bending process. Steam bending process is a traditional process. It has been there like a few thousand years, I think, yeah. But we have really hacked it so we can actually bend a thousand and different unique curvature just because we uh, introduced augmented reality device in our making process. Our students and myself, we were wearing Microsoft HoloLens and looking at the digital hologram on the actual position and placing our molds and frames. And then we were bending the wood over those positioned frames. So the entire process has been really used with the help of augmented reality device. Without the use of it, it couldn't really build this kind of complex geometries within this time, or it would have been very, very difficult to, to use any other method that is not really intuitively understandable. 
such as hologram. In our exhibition, we also made a up AR application so people can experience just by coming here and looking at some digital models and digital overlays with the physical model itself. So visitors can experience our AR construction process a little bit. The human role in this project, especially during the construction process, I would say is really important. First of all, we were not really expert of seam bending process. Of course, we have some experience, but we are not expert on it. So we had to deal with a lot of unexpected errors and difficulties. There were a lot of unexpected spring back after the curvature bends. Also, because the geometry is so complex, there has to be a lot of different human adjustments needed during the assembly processes. So all of this couldn't have been done really without the understanding of the relationship of each part. So I would say uh, human role has been really critical in dealing with such a complex geometries and complex structure. This project is separated into five to six parts and we produced in that five to different phases. The first uh, three parts was separated panels that consist of five to ten long steam bent stripes. Then they become a surface and the three, three and four different surfaces are combined together. The tectonic of this structure is to really express the fluidity of the elegant form. So we try to use as long continuous stripes and lines as a design language to try to guide people's uh, eye and vision to really travel around every part of the structure itself. So there is no differentiation between floor and column or ceiling or beam and everything is intertwined and interconnected. Hardwood is better for steam bending. Before we actually decide our species of wood, we did try different kinds of species that are available in California. And we also tried different thicknesses and widths and we finally came up with this, this decision to use red oak. We had to kind of initially guess how much this can bend without being broken. So we had to go about few test to find out what is the biggest curvature we can bend with this specific species. So our design is actually constrained by those minimal radiuses. The wood bending kind of curvature and trends of the uh, bending is actually calculated uh, quite precisely from, uh, from computers. So our metal brackets can accommodate that kind of wood bending curvature. I think by learning how material behaves, we also constantly change our design. So it has been a feedback loop. It is quite important how we understand how material behaves and what is the uh, limitations and what is the possibilities of the making and assembling process. And we can really do push our design to our limit. So I think material behavior to affect the design language and design decisions. We want to develop this version further and we want to keep on researching on how to evolve this structure into something um, more usable yeah, and more useful than just remaining as a structural prototype or beautiful sculpture. I'm looking forward to develop this into a more usable enclosed space.